Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Well, 25 years ago, when the Rights of the Terminally Ill Bill was introduced into the Northern Territory Parliament, I wanted the Northern Territory parliamentarians to vote against it. Based on cultural and personal grounds, I certainly did not support it. 25 years later, I still do not support voluntary assisted dying. But I do support the Northern Territory Parliament having the right to debate what is an absolutely critical issue on behalf of the people of the Northern Territory, an issue that has been debated across Australia in every state parliament since the Northern Territory introduced it and then had it removed. The Euthanasia Laws Act was passed by the Commonwealth Parliament in 1997. All of the states have passed laws allowing for voluntary assisted dying in Australia. But of course, as we all know, it was the Northern Territory where we saw not only Australia's first legislation on euthanasia, but the first in the world. The NT Parliament passed these laws on behalf of their constituents who voted for them to represent them. It was a democratic decision. The sky didn't fall apart, but the Howard government saw fit to stomp over the democratic rights of Territorians, throw out their fair decision and gag them for half a century still to this day. A lot of Territorians were very upset as they saw the Andrews bill developed, debated and eventually turned into law. I looked through some of the speeches, and I even knew then of those politicians who were there. A speech that was introduced by the then Chief Minister Marshall Perrin, a most passionate advocate. And then again the speeches by Maurice Rioli, the late Maurice Rioli, and Mr Wes Lanapoy, two First Nations people in the parliament at the time, two with very different views as to how to approach this most sensitive issue. That's what democracy is about. That's what the Westminster system brought to this country, an opportunity for parliaments to be able to debate, to agree, to disagree, to amend, but to be heard with respect. I'd like to share with the Senate the story of Bob Dent, who was one of those Territorians who paid very close attention to the Andrews Bill. He did this in his final days. Mr Dent actually became the first person in the world to die using a voluntary euthanasia law, and he was one of only four people able to access the NT's rights of the Terminally Ill Act before it was overturned by the federal government. Mr Dent, a former pilot and carpenter from Darwin, had prostate cancer, which infiltrated his bone marrow, deteriorating his body. Before Mr Dent passed away, he sent a letter to all federal politicians to make it clear how he felt about the Andrews Bill. And part of his letter read, I read with increasing horror newspaper stories of Kevin Andrews' attempt to overturn the most compassionate piece of legislation in the world. Actually, my wife has to read the newspaper stories to me as I can no longer focus my eyes. If you disagree with voluntary euthanasia, then don't use it, but don't deny me the right to use it if and when I want to." End of, quote. of course, it's difficult to imagine how Mr Dent might have felt knowing that a democratic decision that affected his life so deeply and so personally could be stomped over and dumped at the whim of the parliament we're all standing in today. I acknowledge Mr Acting Deputy President, the advocacy and hard work of Luke Gosling MP and Alicia Payne MP in bringing this bill to the parliament to finally right a wrong that was made here in this same parliament 25 years ago. This bill has been a long time coming. In 2022, yet Territorians and Canberrans still have less democratic rights than their fellow Australians in the States. And this bill, hopefully, is going to change that. For 25 years, the ACT and Northern Territory 
have been banned from legislating, let alone debating, the issue of voluntary euthanasia, and it is something that all other states can do and now have done. This bill before the Senate, of course, does not in any way legislate voluntary assisted dying. I need to make that very, very clear. It simply proposes the territories to give them equal democratic rights to debate and legislate this issue within their own parliaments. It's not something that should be deliberately conflated and confused for political advantage. This is ultimately an issue of territory rights of Australians living in the territories having the same rights as fellow Australians in the states. The bill proposes to remove archaic restrictions preventing the Australian Capital Territory and Northern Territory from passing any legislation which would allow for voluntary assisted dying. And these restrictions, as I said, were introduced in 1997 through the passage of a private member's bill introduced by Mr Kevin Andrews, MP. This attempt here today is, of course, not the first in this parliament to remove uh, Kevin Andrews' restrictions and restore territory rights, but I certainly hope, Mr Acting Deputy President, that it is the last and that this one will be successful. Since the passing of Andrews' legislation, there appear to have been around nine bills subsequently introduced into parliament with the intention of granting one or more of the territories the ability to pass their own laws relating to voluntary assisted dying. And all of these have been private members' bills. I acknowledge the work and good intentions of all those who have attempted to restore territory rights, albeit unsuccessfully. It is fortunate that we do have a government here today that has given us a chance to finally, in my view, and hopefully correct this wrong and make a change. Before the election, the Albanese government committed as a priority to facilitate the introduction of this bill to restore the rights of the territories. And this is fortunately a piece of legislation that can bring a lot of us together. We saw the Territory Rights Bill pass the lower house with an overwhelming majority. It had the support of members of the Greens, the Coalition, Labor and Independents. I'd like to just touch on a few issues that have been raised so far here, and I, I guess I also want to give um, my own views, as I did at the outset, that as a Yanyu Agarua woman, I am deeply aware of the cultural concerns uh, in terms of uh, assisted dying. I also know that in uh, our way, uh, people do want to go back on country and they feel that they know their time is near. So I have a very personal uh, view about this issue. Uh, should, it get, should this bill pass and it gets to the Northern Territory Parliament to debate it, I will probably be one of the first people to urge the politicians there to vote against it. But they still have the right to debate it. The Australian Parliament should not be taking away the rights of our fellow Australians in the Northern Territory and the ACT. I do call on senators, Mr Acting Deputy President, to see the importance of the territories and their respective parliaments, that they be enabled to have the debate that every state parliament now has had. So, senators, I urge you, if you are unsure, I urge those of you who are still wondering what to do, please support this bill. Please do not make these Australians in the ACT and in the Northern Territory feel any less worthy than the Australians you represent in your respective states. <laughs>